Hello and welcome to a new game from the 16th edition of the TCC Cup. This is a game from the semi-finals played between Lila and Komodo. This is game 7. Here is Lila's path in the competition. In the first round beat Piraruku, in the second one Chessbrain, and in the quarterfinal uh, beat Scorpio NN and then Komodo and lost the final against Talkfish. And today we have as I mentioned, the game from the semi-final against Komodo, game 7. They started with d4, and now we have d5, knight f3, e6, c4, knight f6. And we have a, a queen's gambit declined. We have now knight c3. And with bishop b4, we went into the Ragozin variation of this opening. Bishop g5, knight d7, c takes, pawn takes, rook c1, all normal logical moves. In this opening, we have c6 now, a3, and after bishop back to d6, we reach the end of the book. And in this position, after Lila's first move out of the book, e3, black usually has two main ideas. One is to castle, and then after bishop d3, play rook e8, and have control over the e4 square, and then play knight f8, and knight g6 and try to win this bishop on g5. The other option is to start actually with knight f8 and then after bishop d3 and knight g6 this knight now uh, takes away these squares from the bishop on g5 and black threatens to, to get the bishop pair basically with h6. So these are the two main ideas for black but Komodo went for a different one um, what he played is a novelty. After e3, he really wanted to, to get this bishop out and pin this knight on f3. And the problem after knight f8 is that if white now plays bishop d3 and he continues with bishop g4, then uh, white has this queen b3 move, getting some counterplay on the b7 pawn. And the complications after, after this variation where queen takes on b7 don't really favor black because uh, yes he won a piece temporarily but white can also uh, ruin black's king side and he will win a lot of these pawns and he will get a very good compensation for for that piece white's white's position actually will be better so in order to avoid this idea instead of knight f8 komodo played here knight b6 which is novelty as i mentioned and now the idea is that after this queen b3 idea, this pawn on b7 is shielded by the knight. So bishop g4 now is, is possible. But here Lila played queen c2, just simply getting out of the spin. And after bishop g4, knight e5, attacking the bishop. We now have bishop h5, bishop d3, and now bishop to g6. We have knight takes on g6, pawn takes on g6. And in this position, black has pressure against h uh, h2 as we can see both the bishop and the rook attacks it and uh, castling of course is not possible but lila played here king f1 very good move which pretty much stops uh, black winning the pawn. if the rook would take here then after rook takes and bishop takes white has a winning move which is g3 trapping the bishop and then uh, threatening to play king g2 and win it so this is not possible taking with the bishop first is a bit more complicated but still not good because of the same g3 now with queen d7 king g2 is pretty much prevented because of this queen h3 check but white can play here f3 allowing this queen to come to g2 and block the check and also put pressure on this bishop which is uh, pinned to the to the rook on, on a8 here, black can give a check, but after queen g2, white is fine. Here, black wants to maybe win this pawn with queen g3, but it's not possible right now because of uh, queen takes. And after bishop takes, this rook would be hanging on a8. So black has two options, either king d7 or long castling to connect the rooks. And now queen g3 is possible, but white can continue with rook c2, putting even more pressure on this bishop. And as we can see, uh, black will lose that piece if queen takes on g3 then rook takes on h2 wins the piece and if queen takes here then after king takes 
bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes, and king takes on g3. White wins again, having the extra piece. So neither bishop takes on h2 or rook takes on h2 works in this position. That's why Komodo played queen d7. And now, of course, after something like g3, queen h3 check uh, would be very good for black. So now this pawn is hanging, but Lila now played h4. We have knight a7 attacking this bishop and pretty much threatening to win a piece since this rook on h1 is uh, undefended. So we have bishop f4, bishop takes, e takes on f4, and in this position Komodo played knight f8. Here castling kingside would be a horrible blunder because of h5 and white threatens to open up the h file and there's big big pressure also on this diagonal. This would be a completely completely winning position winning attack here for white so short castling is not possible long castling it is though and that's one of the options that black has here knight f6 again is not so great because of the rookie one check the king has to move away and won't be able to castle but what komodo played of course knight f8 is also good intending to meet rookie one check with knight e6 this is good for black so instead of rookie one check Lila actually played here knight e2 and now we have knight e6 and now g3 just defending all these pawns and trying to maintain the king side safe. Komodo played here knight c4 now intending to give up a pawn in order to get rid of this very strong light square bishop but of course Lila hangs on to that bishop especially with all these uh, light square weaknesses on, his, uh, on her king side so instead she played king g2 finally the rooks are connected now we have a6 queen c3 knight d6 and now b4 lila is launching an offensive on the queen side since castling short here for black is not possible of course because of h5 and staying with the king in the center is also not very good with this e file being opened up this king pretty much has to go to the queen side so lila already advances the pawns here in order to get an attack we have long castling now and after a4 we have king b8 rook b1 intending to break with b5 but we have knight c7 stopping that queen c1 rook e8 now and in this position we have now knight g1 this knight wants to go to f3 and from there to e5 or, or g5 and in this position komodo now played rook e4 is now tempting Lila to, to give up this bishop for an exchange but Lila still didn't buy it because if the bishop would take in here then after d takes on e4 black would uh, get this very very strong uh, square for the knight he would also have this strong pawn on, uh, on e4 and uh, the major problem here for Lila would be this knight which is completely out of the game this knight would really like to be on e3 to meet knight d5 but uh, it's not possible best move here is knight h3 in order to allow this rook to come here and after knight d5 rook e1 and f6 this knight is completely out of the game he can go to g5 and it's very very difficult to get him to e3 and in the meantime black has very strong knights and uh, thanks to that he has a, an equal game uh, even though he's uh, down the exchange after something like queen c2 rook e8 Black's position is very solid. So that's why instead of uh, taking the rook, Lila played now knight f3, defending this pawn. We have f6, queen d1, queen e6, rook e1 now, but Lila doesn't want to take here. We have rook h8, and now after rook c1 and queen f5, placing the queen into the spin, Lila plays rook h1, intending to play knight e1, knight c2, and then trap their rook with f3. So we have here queen e6 and now knight e1. And Lila gives up the spawn on d4. Can Komodo take it? Well, if it takes here, then after knight c2, this rook pretty much has to make a decision. Either take the bishop or play rook e4 or rook c4. None of which are very good for black. If the rook takes here, then after queen takes on d3, black doesn't have enough um, compensation for for being down the exchange this is not the same position as before when black had a very strong pawn on e4 and a very strong knight on, on d5 
and white had a pawn on d4 in this position white can play knight d4 and the knight would be very very strong on d4 so this is not the same position and here komodo could maybe try to get something similar like before with uh, this check but if the queen takes pawn takes white can meet knight d5 now with knight d3 this knight now is pretty much in the game and uh, this would be better for white actually so taking uh, on d3 doesn't really work here for for black if he goes to e4 the rook then it runs into f3 pretty much forced to go to c4 and now if the bishop takes and pawn takes Dila could continue with rook e1 attacking this queen which has to defend the knight and after queen d7 now this knight is in a pin and this would allow Lila to play knight e3 and pick up this pawn on c4 again black doesn't have enough compensation for being down the exchange instead of pawn takes on c4 here if the knight takes then again queen d3 attacks here of the queen f7 knight d4 and black has a better position so we can see that uh, rook takes on d4 is is not really possible instead uh, lila was actually expecting here rook d8 when f3 doesn't work because now the rook can take here and after knight c2 the rook could go to c4 and now after bishop takes and pawn takes uh, lila could play rook e1 to attack the queen but now the knight on d6 is defended by the rook so the queen could drop back to g8 and uh, black could hang on to the pawn. knight e3 would even fail because of this knight e4 move attacking the queen and uh, the queen can go to b3 and if it goes to c2 or e2 then black wins the queen with rook d2 so this would be winning position for black and uh, if after rook d8 instead of f3 lila tries first knight c2 to defend this pawn then knight c4 is good intending to go to b2 and attack the queen and the bishop so f3 again would fail because of this queen d2 and now the knight can remove the defender of e2 and the rook can give a check here and black is completely fine here so uh, rook d8 uh, would be maybe the correct move here instead komodo played g5 trying to open up uh, lines against the black king but this is now the moment where lila decided to to take actually the exchange and now if the pawn takes well this is not the same position as before because now after h takes rook takes king takes pawn takes pawn takes and knight d5 black again has these strong knights here and the pawn on, on, on e4 but now lila's knight is pretty pretty much in the game and can go to g2 and from there to e3 and uh, white's position would be better so actually instead of d takes on e4 here komodo took with the queen and gave a check we have f3 queen back and now f takes on g5 f takes and now h5 keeping the h5 closed and at this point lila already evaluates this at plus 1.3 for for white we have now rook f8 rook c3 knight f5 intending to land on e3 and uh, get back the exchange we have now queen d2 defending king a7 knight c2 queen f6 rook b3 king a8 rook d3 knight d6 queen f2 and now g4 attacking the the pin pawn on f3 but black has to be careful because now after queen e2 he can't really afford to open lines being down the exchange taking here would be a big mistake because after rook takes and queen back to d8 after rook takes queen takes and queen e5 attacking these knights and threatening rook f1 lila would be much much better of course so instead of g takes on f3 Komodo played rook e8 attacking the queen but now lila challenges the e-file with rook e3 and exchanging the rooks is not good for Komodo, so he played here knight e6 avoiding the exchange but now this knight is in a pin and we have now f takes on g4 lila winning the pawn but Komodo played here knight c4 and he tries to get back the exchange and he actually will manage because moving this rook away is not possible because of knight f4 check and uh, black would win the queen so the rook pretty much is lost but this knight is still in a pin so we have now rook f1 knight takes on e3 we check we have queen takes but now after the queen moves 
to e7, this knight is in a pin, and Lila played now rook f5, intending rook e5, and um, with this pin and with the extra two pawns here on the king side, white has a, a winning position. At this point, Lila evaluates it at 2.8. We have g6, rook e5, queen f7 now, queen f2, and now after queen takes on f2 and king takes, Komodo can actually unpin with a rook f8 check, but we have king b8 first, and now after knight e1, we have pawn takes, pawn takes, and now rook f8 check. King e3, and now knight d8. Knight d3, and this knight is going now to c5, where it will have a very, very strong position, attacking b7, where the rook could also attack, so black has to be careful not to allow that. We have knight f7 attacking the rook. Rook f5, pinning this knight again. Uh, rook e8 check again, getting out of the pin with another check. King f3, knight d6 now and the knight will be able to come to e4, but unfortunately for Komodo after rook f6, knight e4 and rook g6, this rook takes away all these important squares from the knight, and even though the knight looks pretty here on e4, it's not so well placed really, because now it's not really in position to stop these pawns. We have rook a8 and now of course g4, a5, pawn takes, king a7, knight c5, Knight d2 check, avoiding the exchange, king f4, rook f8 check, king e5, rook f2, and now rook g7, attacking here on b7, and Komodo can't even defend that. We have rook e2 check, king f5, and now knight back to e4, and of course here rook b7 is uh, very very good, but Lila just took on e4, and Komodo didn't bother recapturing that knight. He played king a6, and now we have rook g8, cheekily threatening mating one with rook aj check. So we have king takes on a5, and now knight c5. And here after b5, uh, the game was finally adjudicated in Lila's favor, and um, Lila won the decisive game in the semi-final. In the end, I would like to thank to René, Adolf, Mark, Gary, Guilherme, Sebastian, Todor and Radu, for their financial support to my channel. Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of the other videos on the right. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.